What's up, guys? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with SPY, Tesla, and the overall markets. I'll we'll talk about some global news that's coming out, not to mention what tomorrow is going to look like. But just know that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out my Weeble link. We deposit any amount of money, you're guaranteed 12 free stocks. We deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks. And put in $25,000 or more, you're guaranteed uh, 75 free stocks. So the offer ends in just four weeks. Anyways, now let's talk about the market. So Tesla's holding up very, very nicely so far. We're going to be watching to see if 256 holds. If we lose that, we're looking for a dip back down to these lower levels. And if it holds, we can try to rebound just for now. But I'm talking about Tesla first because this is going to be a very, very big one. Uh, just so you guys know, we have deliveries numbers coming out for tomorrow. Production delivery for Q3. It's coming out tomorrow at 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. However, they are known for being a little bit late. Sometimes, sometimes the numbers are like 10 minutes late. Sometimes they're an hour late. So it could be a little later sometimes, but we'll have to see. But most likely it should be coming before open. Uh, this is going to be very important for the share price. So if you are holding anything overnight, if you're holding Tesla calls, Tesla puts, or any kind of position in the markets, be careful. We don't know what's going to happen. So if you want to make a bet on Tesla doing well and the share price going up, or Tesla not doing so well and the share price going down or something like that, it's up to you. It's 100% on you. It's your choice, but just know what the risks are. For data about the markets, I'm not seeing much data tomorrow. We just have like a couple of feds, excuse me, a, fed, a couple of fed speakers. Uh, nothing too crazy. So the data is going to be very minor for tomorrow. However, I do want to call out the situation that's happening overseas. So in the Middle East right now, the situation is very intense. It's very sad to hear about this. Iran has been launching missiles on Israel uh, because of all these different factors. So I'm not saying it's starting with this. This is, goes back, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of years. Uh, but I just want to say that this is a very, very intense situation. Uh, there's no sign that this is de-escalating quite yet, and this could lead to a bigger global conflict as the U.S. is getting involved. So the U.S. getting involved and all these other countries, you know, it's still very, very uh, scary, especially for everyday people who have nothing to do with this. So I, I just hope for peace. I hope for the best. That's what the large majority of people want. And we'll see what happens at least moving forward. So if something really big happens overnight, if there's a bigger attack that could lead to some more fears in the markets. Another big factor is this right here, the strikes that are going on. At the U.S. ports, we're seeing a possible catalyst that could affect global supply chains. Uh, we're seeing massive dock workers going on strike at seaports at the U.S. East and Gulf Coasts. And this is, could be affecting our supply chains and the U.S. economy. This is very, very important. Um, Right now, there's making there's a lot of demands being made. We will see if negotiations could be made as soon as possible, and we'll see what else ends up happening. So please be uh, very, very mindful of this. Um, I also want to say that with everything that's going on so far with all the pork workers, uh, we will see if uh, negotiations are completed quite yet. We're actually seeing some talks about that, but we'll see. Anyways, that's pretty much it for news. We'll see how this affects us moving forward. Tesla is going to make a big move tomorrow. It's going to gap up or gap down. If the data does come out right before the market open, which is when it's scheduled to come out, I think we could be gapping up towards the 270s or we could see a gap down to the 240s or below. So please be very mindful of that. Tesla is going to be making a very, very big move. We either are going to be up 13 points or down at least 13, 14. So we'll see. Uh, I can't really give you guys a 100% certain prediction. You want to be open-minded about that. So heed my warning about Tesla. For SPY, we're dipping right now. I think we might dip into close. We're barely holding our 50 EMA. We'll see if this holds at 567.5. We have resistance at 570. Uh, we'll see if 567.5 holds or not. If it does not hold, I see us dipping to the mid 560s. So 565 is likely coming next and 563. So we'll see if 567.5 holds. We're looking kind of weak on SPY still. And there's a risk of it dipping lower. Um, I want to call this out because right now the situation remains very intense and whatever happens overnight could cause the market to gap up or gap down. Uh, you know, we, we still look more weak, so the gap down seems a little bit more favorable, but we'll see. So be very open-minded for that. Um, same thing with ES. ES is also showing some weakness. ES is actually below its 50 EMA, so it's a bad sign. We need to reclaim uh, 57.69. If we can't do that, we're at risk of dipping all the way down to the lows again. So this still looks more bearish, especially as we have this gap to fill down here. So be careful on ES. For others out there, like NVIDIA, NVIDIA is dipping right now. we got to reclaim 119. If we don't, our support's at 116.8. If we can't hold that, we're looking for the gap fill all the way down to 114. So we still look more bearish, so watch for that as well. For Bitcoin... 
We're rejecting so far. We have the support at 61,744. If that fails us, we're dipping down to this imbalance towards the 60,000 area. If this holds, we could attempt to rebound for 63,000, but we still look more bearish nonetheless. For others out there, we also have um, uh, NQ. NQ is dipping right now. Uh, we have resistance around 20,096. And if we continue to fall, we're looking for basically this uh, very, very key level at 19,850. So this could be dipping even lower. So watch for this as well. Um, the QQQ is also kind of stuck right here. So we have basically 481.5 as our resistance. If that breaks, we're looking for basically 485. If we can't break that, we could be dipping down to where this gap is to 475. So 480 fails us. Look for 478 and 475 on the QQQ. We'll see what happens overnight with the whole situation. We still look bearish. Apple is barely testing its 50 EMA as well at 226.37. If that breaks, we could rebound. If not, we could be rejecting back down to this gap fill at 222. For others out there, like the IWM, we're barely at support at 216. If that fails us, I think the 200 EMA is coming in this gap fill. So 214 and 212 are the main supports if 216 fails us. We have resistance at 219. We'll see which way we go depending on the situation overnight. But we still look more bearish. AMD looks more bearish as well. It is favoring 158 and eventually 157. So be mindful of that. Amazon, we have resistance basically around this uh, 186.5 area. Uh, I think that's looking pretty good. And if we end up losing 182, we could be dipping lower. Um, we are kind of stuck in the middle, so I'm going to give this some time to consolidate, but there is still that risk of downside. Meta has been holding up very well compared to the market. We have 580 as our resistance. This was supposed to run today, but it did not run because of this news. So if 580 breaks, we could attempt to push. If not, we are at risk of um, dipping lower. We, our main support, though, is at 569, the 20 EMA. We will see as long as that holds, it still technically is going to remain range bound. If we lose that, then I will turn more bearish, but it hasn't done that yet. For Microsoft, we look more bearish. If we can't reclaim, if, if we lose 420, we're looking for 414. If we try to re, we reclaim uh, 424, we turn back up, but this is still favoring downside. And lastly, Google is still kind of stuck. We have 170 as our resistance and then 165 as our support. We're still stuck in the middle, so we'll give this some time. With that being said, guys, I just want to say I really appreciate you guys so much for listening. The market's dipping into close. It's probably going to do that. So be careful. We'll see what happens tomorrow if we gap down or not. Uh, I hope that we end up with a more peaceful situation. I don't want violence on any side. Um, at the end of the day, you know, it's the innocent lives that are at stake. So let's hope for the best. Let's see how, how things end up going. I, I believe President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris will be addressing this very, very soon and going over more details. Uh, we'll see how things go. So thank you for listening. I'll see you guys in a couple of hours for another updates. Um, until then, don't forget about my warnings about holding anything overnight. Uh, there are a lot of people who are very bearish right now. They could be right because of seasonality. And then... Uh, for Tesla, we have deliveries coming out, so be ready for that as well. So I hope for the best for Tesla. Hopefully deliveries go well. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and peace out.